Recently, after hearing a myth about the alignment of New York City Masonic Obelisk, I was inspired to create a route down to the foot to better see it. First little background on the obelisks and their history. So if you go downtown in New York, you'll find St. Paul's Chapel, which was built in 1764 and is the oldest continuously occupied structure in New York City. Within the churchyard is the Emmet Obelisk, that is the grave marker for Thomas Addison from 1827. He was born in Ireland in 1764 and was a supporter of Irish independence. He was jailed by the British and his brother Robert was actually executed for leading the 1803 rebellion there. After he immigrated from Ireland, he became a successful lawyer that was a New York State Attorney General briefly in 1812. The obelisk was built in the 1830s and supposedly has the coordinates etched in the stone, although they are known to be slightly off. There are certain speculations that Thomas Addison was to be reinterred from the vault on St. Mark's to St. Paul's, but his remains were never moved. There is also reportedly a chamber beneath the obelisk, but nothing in the space. Now if you go uptown to 23rd Street, right beside Madison Square Park in the Flatiron Building, you'll find the Worth Obelisk. This was built for the war hero, General William Jenkins Worth, who was entombed under the structure. Worth Street in Manhattan was named after him, as well as Fort Worth in Texas. He fought in the Battle of 1812, but died of cholera in San Antonio in 1849, during the Mexican-American War. Reliefs show the various battles the general was in, and there is a time capsule on the cornerstone of the monument. In 1864, Worth was approached by Cuban Freemasons called the Havana Club, who wanted to overthrow the colonial government there. He was temporarily interred in Greenwood Cemetery, but then moved after the obelisk and tomb were built. A procession of 6,500 soldiers and a speech from the mayor took place when he was put in the tomb in 1857. The monument was built by James G. Batterson. Batterson was contracted by Abraham Lincoln to build the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. He also constructed the Masonic Temple in New York City, which is a block away on 6th Avenue. If you go all the way up to Central Park, you'll find the third obelisk of the set called Cleopatra's Needle. It is by far the oldest standing structure in New York City and had an arduous journey to get here. The obelisk is about 3,500 years old and was created on the orders of the pharaoh Tutmusa. It once stood with a similar one that is now in London. Some of the hieroglyphs were added 300 years after the obelisk was created and are dedicated to Ramses II. Cleopatra wasn't responsible for the obelisk because it already existed for a thousand years before she was born. The Romans moved them in 18 AD to Alexandria where they were eventually toppled and buried in the sand. This ironically preserved their carvings. The one in Central Park is made of solid red granite and is over 69 feet high, weighing about 224 tons. Moving the obelisk started in 1877 when it was given to the U.S. in exchange for funds to modernize Egypt. Henry Honeychurch Gorge was hired to transport the massive stone by ship from Alexandria. It had to be tilted horizontally and then slid into a ship's hull through a hole. After arriving in New York in July of 1880, it was hauled by a team of 32 horses from the Hudson River to the east side of Central Park. From there it was put on top of a specially built railroad trestle and brought into the park via steam engine. It took a total of 112 days to move the obelisk through New York and over three years from Alexandria. 
The movement of the monument through the streets of New York took so long, about a block a day, that temporary shacks to sell candy to onlookers were moved along with the slow procession. As the word spread, guards were installed to watch over the obelisk in transit as treasure hunters with hammers were constantly trying to chisel off keepsakes. The spot at Greywack Knoll in the park seems arbitrary at first, but was close to the recently constructed Metropolitan Museum of Art. The transportation and raising of the obelisk was mostly financed by William Henry Vanderbilt, who chose the location specifically. A parade of 9,000 Freemasons went up Fifth Avenue for the full Masonic cornerstone ceremony on October 2, 1880. 50,000 spectators lined this route. The Central Park Obelisk is on top of boxes containing items from the late 1880s, including a copy of the Declaration of Independence, an 1870 census, a set of military medals, the complete work of Shakespeare, coins, a hydraulic pump, and a guide to Egypt and Masonic emblems. There is also apparently a secret box that contains objects that were only known to the man who transported and raised the stone. When it was moved from Alexandria, it was believed to be with items such as a perfect ashlar stone, a trowel, and a diamond-shaped aperture. The obelisk was recently restored in 2014 that remediated the effects of pollution and weather for over 134 years in New York City. This was done with a laser. Another interesting alignment in the route is the main branch of the public library on 5th Avenue and 42nd Street. This was not the structure at that location in the 19th century. The Croton Distributing Reservoir was connected to the city's aqueduct system in 1842 and was demolished in the late 1890s. The reservoir was constructed when Midtown was practically farmland. It was a massive structure standing 50 feet high with 25 foot thick walls which held 20 million gallons of fresh water. It was also designed in an Egyptian motif, which is inherently Masonic. With the route I created, you can see that the three obelisks line up with great accuracy. The order in which the obelisks were added is curious as well, particularly the positioning of Cleopatra's needle, which was last. It leaves one to conclude that its placement was intentional. <laughs> 